Dear colleagues, I am Christoph Diener from the medical faculty of the University Duisburg Essen in Germany and I want to report what happened in the first six weeks of 2022 in neurology with uh, multiple sclerosis and stroke. Let me start with the a spectacular publication in Science on the possible relationship between Epstein-Barr virus infections and multiple sclerosis. This paper is based on 10 million people in the American army who were followed from 1993 to 2013. And in this population, 925 people uh, developed multiple sclerosis and from 801 serum samples were available. And 800 out of 801 had positive titters against Epstein-Barr virus. This was much higher than in a control population. By the way, for cytomegaly virus infections, there was no difference. And also, if they looked at the conversion rate for Epstein-Barr virus in serum, this was the case in 97% of the patients with MS, but only in 57% in the control group. But these data would suggest that there is an association between Epstein-Barr virus infection and multiple sclerosis, but this does not mean this is a causal relationship. And there was uh, a lot of public uh, press coverage of this and uh, the conclusion was that possibly a vaccination against Epstein-Barr virus would prevent multiple sclerosis, but unfortunately this vaccination is not yet available. Now let me move to stroke. We all know that uh, thrombectomy is also effective beyond the standard six-hour time window. And a group of researchers performed a meta-analysis published in Lancet of six studies with 505 patients where this method was compared, thrombectomy was compared to standard medical treatment in patients beyond the six-hour time window. And the outcome was modified ranking after 90 days. And it's not a surprise that in this population, thrombectomy was significantly more effective than standard medical care. The odds ratio was 2.42. There was no difference in mortality. Thrombectomy, 16.5%, and standard medical care, 19.3%. Now, some patients, in particular Asians, can have symptomatic intracranial stenosis. And many years ago, the SEMPRIS trial showed no benefit of stenting of intracranial stenosis beyond best medical therapy. But the complication rate of stenting has decreased dramatically in the last few years. And therefore, a study group in China published a paper in JAMA Neurology where they treated um, 263 patients with symptomatic intracranial stenosis either with drug eluting stents or bare metal stents and followed these patients for one year. And again, it's not a surprise that the rate of re-stenosis after one year was much lower with drug eluting stents, 9.5%, compared to bare metal stent with 30%, and this translated also into a lower rate of recurrent strokes. Now let me summarize a few studies which were, pre which were presented at the International Stroke Congress in the United States in February 2022. The first study was from Japan and, in, and published at the same time in the New England Journal of Medicine. The investigators collected patients who had an intracranial occlusion of a large cerebral artery and a large stroke, aspect 3 to 5. And they compared thrombectomy with standard medical care. The modified ranking 0 to 3 after 90 days was 31% in the thrombectomy group and 12.7% in the best medical treatment group. Then this related to a relative risk of 2.43. So obviously, also some patients with severe strokes can benefit uh, from thrombectomy. Another study from the United States compared 
the treatment in, in dedicated stroke centers with primary stroke units. And they looked at 84,903 patients between 2018 and 2020. And again, it's not a surprise that being treated in a comprehensive stroke center leads to a shorter time interval to the initiation of thrombolysis and thrombectomy and to a better outcome. Now, another study was a real-world study with 1,000 patients with acute ischemic stroke who were treated with thrombectomy. And 50% of these patients had a good functional outcome. But unfortunately, this big study had no control group, and we are all convinced, I think, that thrombectomy dramatically improves the outcome of stroke patients. Now, the final study was a registry study in patients with sinus venous thrombosis. The investigators collected 1,025 patients between 2015 and 2022, and they compared DOACs, uh, which were taken by 33% of patients with warfarin, taken by 52%, and 15% had either uh, DOAC or warfarin, and they were switched between the two. After one year, there was no difference in the risk of recurrent sinus venous thrombosis or mortality between the two treatment groups, but the rate of severe uh, bleeding complications, including intracranial bleeds, was reduced by 65% with DOAX, and this would be a very strong argument to use DOAX in patients with sinus venous thrombosis. But in summary, the International Stroke Congress was not a congress where, where really studies were presented which would change everyone's clinical practice. So let's hope that we see more promising results at European Stroke Organization meeting in May. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Christoph Diener from the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Duisburg-Essen, and thank you very much for listening and watching.